Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my brother and sister of this world. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a message, and the title of the message is Woman Having Sex with Woman, Men Having Sex with Men. Abomination, Abomination, and Abomination. I repeat, Woman Having Sex with Woman, Men Having Sex with Men. Abomination, Abomination, and Abomination. Hallelujah. Uh, the, the, the topic that God has given me today, there are many churches around, including 95 or 98% of the people in America, the pastors or the bishop or the reverend, they are afraid to tell, to tell the people the truth. They're scary. They don't want to correct the people. They don't want to instruct them. They don't want to tell the people the truth. They try to compromise with, with the people's life. They don't want to tell the people what God says. But I am not afraid. Nothing no one can do to me. But I tell you the truth. That is what I'm going to be afraid of. No. God forbid. I'm not going to be afraid. What? So... Because many of the pastors around the world today, they are going into the same old trap. They don't want to tell the people the truth. All they want to tell the people there about prosperity. No repentance, no salvation, nothing. They want to compromise with the people's life. Compromise. But I get good news for you. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. I'm going to read it. I may know it, but I'm going to find it and we're going to read it together. And let us read. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If you have a sound mind, you call yourself a man of God, woman of God around the United States and all beyond the world. You know the truth. And you're afraid to tell the people the truth. You know it. But you're scared to tell the people because of money. Because you want to have a bigger church and you want to be rich. So that is why you're preaching the gospel for? For money? War unto you. Your time is coming very soon. If you do not repent and turn away from your compromising life or compromising preaching, God will strike you. Everyone in there, so that when you preach there, there's some, some, some people, my friends there, some of them engage into their, their activities, homosexualism and lesbianism, and so they don't want me to even talk about it. I have become their enemy. But I know it already. Galatians 4.16 says, Have I not become your enemy by telling you the truth? Galatians 4.16. I know it already. I'm already your enemy. I know that already. But I will never relent. I will not give up. I will keep on telling you the truth. Repent of your sin. Turn away from that ugly, that shameful act. Oh, we just getting started. We ain't going nowhere yet. We just get it started. Get your pen and your book. Make note. St. John chapter 8, verse 32. Now say, I will read 31 and 32. St. John chapter 8. Pastor, there, what, where's the need? Where's the new you have preaching the word of God? St. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believe on him, and if yet continue in my word. 
then yea, I am my disciple indeed. Tell it to. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you call yourself a disciple of God, a pastor, a man of God, a child of God, you know the truth, and you're going to sit under and compromise because of money? You're afraid to tell the people the truth? Because they're coming in with big, you know, big package, a big, you know, offering. So you're afraid to tell it. But I got good news for you. If you do not desist of your compromising and preaching, God is coming for you. Tell the people the truth. Whether they like it or they don't like it. Whether they leave or they don't leave. You got to continue telling them the truth. That is what Jesus Christ did on this earth. Nobody here fit in Jesus' mouth, and Jesus here did not fit in the mouth. In a sharp parable or a proverb, it means that he's not ashamed or he's not going to compromise. He's not afraid. Do not be afraid. That is why we read from the, the first chapter today. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God for God have not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. If you have a sound mind, you will see a woman kissing a woman, having that relationship going to the court to go and say they want to marry. Do not participate. Do not associate with them. Then to the to, to the to, to the, the shameful act, then some suck up men of God, suck up pastor, suck up bishop. They officiating the people wedding, man and man, woman and woman. Then you call yourself men of God. Then you, you officiating. You, you know you you welcoming and you you think God not watching you? You suck up men of God. Get man and man, then you you stand there, then you read the Bible quotation. Which part of the Bible tells you say a man and man should marry? Which part of the Bible tells you say a woman and woman should marry? You soak up men of God. You say I'm gonna sit up there and then look at you people and I will not talk. First of all, I'm a sinner. I did a lot of terrible things in my life, and the terrible thing is I smoke weed. I drink. That is it. But I have repented of my sin. I am not like you. What you are doing right now is a shameful act. Because God created man. And all of men, God created a woman to be a helper. A man will leave his father and mother and will clinch to his wife. And those two will become one. They say a man and man. But I got good news for you. If you have a pen and a paper, they start texting right now. Take a note. Now go straight into it. We're going to go start from the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. And I read. And the ribs that the Lord had Take it from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of my. Take it out of a man. 
So Adam says she shall be, you know, a, a bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Her niece, she, she, she should be called a woman. Because she was taken out of man. Woman. You see? And we we ain't gone nowhere yet. Just to let you people know that your gay stuff, your lesbian stuff there, is a shame for us. Shame on you. When you walk in the street, you don't feel like you sh uh, that it's a big, you know, a, a big and a lot of burden on you. Or I, if I don't, if I'm not describing that, I it's a burden on you. You don't feel good. You don't feel good. It's a shameful act. You love into your friend woman. You having a relationship with another woman, and you know you having another. You having a relationship with a, a man, man and man, woman and woman. It's a shameful act. But anyway, we get we just get this started. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 27. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So God, you are created in the image of God, man and woman. God created man and put and found that a man was so lonely by himself. And he put men to the deep sleep. And all of the man ribs, he took a rib and made a woman for the woman to be a, a helper. God never created another man. Only one man, Adam. He created Eve to be his helper. So, a man and a woman. He did not create two women. Or created two men at the same time. No, he created a man. Then after he created a man, he, created, he made a woman out of a man. And you suck up people around the world, including the country that I'm in. You all have the audacity, the guts, the infantry to go and tell somebody, the two men standing there, they tell other men, and do you take this man to be your love, lovely, worthy husband? Man and man. They tell the woman, and the two women stand together, they tell you call yourself suck up. Man of God, pastor, then you, you officiating. You, I don't know what kind of boy. I know you don't have no shame. You don't fear God. Then you stand ready to officiate two men. Telling them that, oh yeah, do you take this man to be your uh, your welly husband? Two men. Then you stand there, you tell two women, do you take this woman to be your lovely welly wife? Two women, two men, and you call yourself pastor. There's some soccer churches around. The people are gay that are in the last bed. All oh, have been gone. If I was there, the very day, the next day you gay, the first day I get to know that you gay, I'm not going to relent until you're going to leave that and choir. You are gay, then you in the choir. You are gay and in the church, you will not be there. Because every day I'm going to preach it. You will be miserable in your seat. Uncomfortable to, to be in the church. Are you kidding me? It's a shameful act. Let me give you a story. When I was growing up, there was a guy who lived 
around. I used to go on the bypass. And this guy, I knew that he was a gay. But you know, you can't despise anyone. You can't say you want to throw anyone away. We are all human beings. And he, he was a CEO. He said, oh, CEO, you know. At that time, really, I used to be, you know, you know I, I would say a little bit attractive, plenty of hair, you know, looking good. And so everybody used to like me. So I get told that, you know, because everybody like me, I, I got to be around everybody. So, you know, I used to receive a lot of gifts from people. So this guy, I knew he was a gay. So... It came to a day was it was some high in the afternoon. So I said, uh, I called him. I said, I, I, I'm not feeling too good, man. I want to try to take a nap. Do you have someone from the sleeping in the hallway until I can wake up and, and, and go home? Guess what? While laying down, <laughs> Jesus Christ of Nazareth, please, I thank you. He came to me. He said, uh, uh, see, see, I want you to do, do this to me. I say, you say what? You want me to what? I said, look at me. I, as big as I am, I am afraid of woman. I'm shame. When I'm talking to woman, I'm a bit nervous. Shame at a time. And you can't tell me, say, I'm a what? For that day, that was the end. Between he knowing me or I knowing him. I never call him again. I never speak to him again no more. I'm a cat dude. <laughs> I want you to be ashamed to talk to a woman that you can't tell me that foolish stuff. That is who I am. I used to say hi to him because you can't tell anybody who is a gay. Oh, don't say hi to me. Say hi to him. Oh, yeah. Receive gift from him. Then some year tell me say you want to know who this guy is today. Yeah, later I said, hey, look, I, I came from I think you know came from playing soccer after I got to take a shower for me to go. Cause I was playing for bar past eleven. I was playing on the on the soccer team. So I said, okay, let me take a little nap before I go home on my dinner street. And he can't tell me, oh, I want you to do this to me. Ah! I told him, please, I'm sure. I'm ashamed to talk to a woman. Then you can't think. <laughs> My brother, I say you're never going to see me around you no more. And that day, that was the end. I told him, please, right in his face. I say you never, you're never going to see me or talk to you no more. It's a, an abomination. You want me to sleep with him? <laughs> Oh, glory be to you, God. So, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. God created man in his own image. Man and woman, he created them in his own image. Then you have the audacity of the infantry, the guts, the temerity. To tell another man that you want to have sex with him. Or you having sex with another man. Then they suck up pastor bishop around the world in America. Meaning, they stand in the gap there. Say they, they officiating the people wailing. The homosexual wailing. God punish you. When God get ready for you. You will not believe in men of God. You call yourself a so-called man of God officiating a lesbian and a gay wedding. And it's a shame to see two women having sexual relationship. Two men having sexual relationship. It's a shame. It's an abomination to God. Your thing, I'm going to sit there and let you to do it. Some of my friends there, I, I knew a long time ago. I don't know you no more. Some of, of my family member there, I know, I knew. I don't know you no more. Because you, I will not see eye to eye. 
Because Galatians chapter 4 verse 16 say, because I'm telling the truth so you now you become my enemy. You welcome to become my enemy. You will be in my family. Because I know what the Bible says for the book of Ezekiel chapter 33. Say, if I, if I do not blow the trumpet to warn you of your terrible life that you live in, your blood going to be on my head. But if I tell you the truth and you don't listen to it, your blood is going to be on your own head. So, y'all wait. Okay, let me tell you today. I don't want your blood to be on my head. Family members, friends, your blood is going to be on your own head. Because I'm telling the truth right now. I'm telling the truth. It's a shameful act. Then the family member, then the friends there who I knew or I know, you all say that you see your children there living that funky life. And you don't tell them, say, no, this life is not a rightful life in the eyes of God. Then the funny thing is, because they see their friends there doing it, or other people doing it, so all of them want to do it. No. Come back, think. Long time ago, you all know. Is that how your mom or your father you know, you know, you know, raised you up? Is that how they raised you up? For you to love to your friend, woman. Or for you to love to your friend, man. Man and man. Woman and woman. Is that how your mom and your dad raised you up? If you mom the people, or the cry, you go and jump in the cry. You're going to find yourself in hell. Let me tell you today. Mr. Gay Man and Mr. Les Bellis, Let me tell you today. If you do not repent of your sin right now today. It may be too late for you tomorrow. You will not have the chance or the upper hand to repent. It will be lit. And if you die in that sin, you go in straight where? Hell, you know it. I don't have to say it. A plain. A plain. Before any gay or, or lesbians put it into heaven, you will have to repent of your sin. And you may not have the chance to repent. So you got to do it right now. Turn away from that sin, that ugly, that immoral act, and turn to Jesus Christ. Live the better life. Woman and a man. A man and a woman. Not woman and woman. Not man and man. You are so your thing that I will not stand out to tell you the truth. Okay? I got another scripture for you. And for this so-called men of God too. The so-called pastors that around the world. And the scripture is from the book of 2 Timothy 3, 16. And I'm going to read. 2 Timothy 3, 16. That is the last, the last page of verse in the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And I read. All scripture is breath of, of is breath of by God and Profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for the training in righteousness. Hallelujah. If I was saying, I think I made a mistake right there. It's not a last verse. The last verse is going to be verse 17. So what I was saying that is, you know, God is telling you and I right there that all scripture is profitable for teaching, correcting, instructing, rebuking, and profitable for you to tell people the truth, not to compromise. For you to train people, for you to correct them, for you to teach them, say there is a better way to live. For you to rebuke them of the mistake that they're making. 
That's that compromising with it. Not because they're paying more time and more, more offering. No. That time and more offering is something like a call up. You rebuild them. You correct them. You instruct them. You teach them. That's why the, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 is saying. Don't compromise. Tell them the truth. Whether they like it or not. Do not compromise with their sin. Then verse 17. That the man of God may be, you know, competent, equipped for every good work. That the man of God should be, as you tell them, tell them the truth, by rebuking them, correcting them, instructing them, teaching them, you will be equipped. For all good works. My people, do not compromise with sin. Men of God, so good men of God around the world, do not compromise with sin. Not because of money. So you may compromise. Let's go on to the next scripture. Because we have we, we ain't gone nowhere yet. Let's go on to Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 5. 